Milienko Matijevic is here today. Stick around. He is the singer for Steelheart. Steelheart has a new single out called Trust and Love. It's available in 10 different languages so far. More to come. Uh, it's going to be part of a whole new album for Steelheart that will include it, that new song, some other new songs, and some re-recorded songs. And we're going to talk about how the band was originally signed way back in the day. Uh, Singing with the Doors, Movie Projects, a reformed version of the band Steel Dragon, which if you remember was the band with Zach Wild from the movie Rockstar with Mark Wahlberg. Uh, all this and much, much more stay right there. Good afternoon or good morning, should I say, on my side. Oh, yeah, minute. where are it's you new. exactly? I'm in Los Angeles. Oh, okay. So, is that, have you been there this whole time since you moved there in the 80s? Uh, no, no, I've been uh, on and off. I've been here and I've been uh, uh, New York, Virginia. Um, yeah, here, Connecticut, New York, Virginia. So, and you, do you prefer one or the other or? Uh, well, you know, I prefer, you know, I definitely, I mean, I, I love the East Coast, but I like, um, you know, the weather here is much better. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can stress out over there, over here, might as well stress out in the sun. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm in like Arizona, that. so it's like we got the sun here, but I know that's probably too hot for most people. But it's cheaper yeah. than L.A., so that's the advantage right. of that. And the LA is, is become, it's become silly. It's like not even exciting anymore. It's just become music scene is weird. And, and the, you know, when you get $28 for a hamburger, it's just like, okay. You know, in some places it's ridiculous. 20, wow. $22 for a drink. You know, it's just, it's like, it's ridiculous. That's the only word for it. You know, when you moved, first moved there in the 80s, was it the 80s? Yeah, it was like 88 or something, 89? No, uh, we made the first record in 89 here, but we didn't live here, so I didn't live here then. Then I went to, uh, um, I moved here, uh, I want to say in 1996, 96, and then I came back, and then I left, and then I came back again in 99, and then I left uh i left in 2004 and then i came back here again in 2000 i want to say 2012. oh okay like i that. thought yeah, yeah i thought i read something like you moved to la is that just to get the record deal then is that just because you got yeah. a deal within like a month of going yeah. there or something yeah yeah no that month it was it was literally a week of going there i mean it was it was insane yeah I don't know. Are you recording this or, or are we? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> hey, no, 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 no. That's cool. No, no. The story I, I just actually, started going, and I just want to go with it. <laughs> no, go with it. Go absolutely. I um, no, I I went to Los Angeles um, after we did a demo. I just said uh, I'm going to Hollywood to become a star. Literally, that's yeah. what I said to to uh, my family having dinner with them one night, and um, went to uh, Friday. I knocked on a bunch of doors and on monday i had a meeting with a producer and a fancy manager <laughs> okay and um so i played so stan with the manager he was down at the pool and i'm playing the music to the producer and he's like wow that sounds great you know maybe we should change this or let's maybe we should fix this and then listen to it again he's like it doesn't need anything this is great this is like done this is amazing it's finished you know Played him four songs. It was, I believe, uh, I'll Never Let You Go, Can't Stop Me Loving You, She's Gone, and uh, I don't know, maybe like Never Before, I think it was. And um, How did you even know what doors to knock on? Because this is before the internet and all this. Like, Did you just yeah. look it up on the phone? Oh, or well, there there was a couple of things. One, we had a, I had a friend out here who was a drummer, and he gave me a lead on this producer and that there's going to be a manager there staying with him for the weekend. And uh, so I got that lead. But before that, I literally, um, I mean, I, I literally just sent in tapes, knocked on doors. I, I mean, I remember going to A&M Records uh, right on Hollywood, knocked in. It was like, oh, we don't take any unsolicited tapes. Like, what do you mean you don't take any unsolicited tapes? I'm good. <laughs> you know, it was like, I mean, I, I pushed it as hard as I could. And it was, 
you know, it was all always everybody, you know, it's too cool for school kind of thing, you know. But um, but that day meeting uh, Stan and meeting um, I forgot the producer's name. Jesus, I can't can't remember. But um, anyway, Stan comes up and uh, he goes, "Hey, you should really listen to this this kid's uh, music." And he goes, "You know." You look great. I'm sure you sound great. I just don't have any time or I don't have any more room for another act. I am on full. I can't handle it. And if I hear it and I like it, then I'm in trouble. Okay. <laughs> and so he goes, so I'm sorry. Sorry. I just don't want to hear it. The other guy goes, you really should listen to this. You should really listen to this. And he goes, all right, I'll tell you what. Here's my address in New York, my office. Send me the tape. I'll have a listen. So that was Monday. When I left, I went right to FedEx and I overnighted it. Okay. So he went to his office Tuesday morning because he was leaving Monday that night. Okay. He comes in the morning on my, I didn't even get home yet on the answering machine. I could hear uh, Angel eyes is, I'll never let you go. He's in, the, in halfway through the song and he's like, you fucking prick. It's that good. <laughs> call me. He goes, call me as soon as you get this. So I got back on Wednesday, right? He goes, you got to come in. Let's come in and talk to New York. I was in Connecticut then. When in Thursday, we had a meeting. We had a verbal agreement. So, okay, we're going to work together, okay? Friday at 5 p.m., he calls me. You're going to be signed to Universal. Have a good weekend. Phone. Hangs up the phone. Wow. I swear. After a billion years of rehearsing, running around looking for um, it's just uh, i can't even tell you how much time energy we spent you know it wasn't it the band was together for 10 years it started out called red no. alert and yeah. uh, but so it just took this one trip to, random trip to la where you really didn't know anybody you're just going to go randomly knock on doors and that's what did it yeah randomly knock on doors and this one one random meeting maybe something you know but it, it just goes to show you you know there's a lot of bullshit, but sometimes you got to go with your gut. You know, there's something you just don't know. You just don't know where it's, you know, where your, um, you know, where your uh, luck is, you know, and mm -hmm. you do need luck. I'll tell you this straight up, you know, anybody in the music business or entertainment business, it's, it's a lot of hard work. It's a lot of focus, but you need luck. You do need luck. But you, you you know. create more luck by taking more chances. Like if you hadn't gone and knocked on those doors, I mean, you can't just sit back and wait for someone to discover you. No. It doesn't usually happen that way. No, no. A lot of people, a lot of, a lot of people are lazy. You can't be lazy. You cannot be lazy, especially in this business. You got to work. You got to, it was funny. I was just talking to this other guitar player earlier and you know, it takes so much dedication, focus to get up every morning go work out and go to the studio. Everyone thinks, oh, it's you know easy or you're a rock star. So we, you know, you got it made. No one has a fucking idea how much work this is, how much time, dedication, focus, okay, uh, it takes to do to be an artist. And I mean, I myself, I don't even see the day. I'm in the studio, you know, I come out sometimes it's nighttime. It's just it's not, um, it's not what everyone thinks, you know, but it's what I do. It's what we do and we love it. So, so are you, are you mostly studio musician then? Oh no, no live and studio. You okay, have to be. Yeah. Well, you're just yeah, saying yeah. like right now is that you're doing a lot of studio stuff. Always doing studio stuff. Always, always right now we're finishing up that 30th album and, um, it's really close to the final stages. Um, we did, um, I did She's Gone with a 40 piece orchestra and piano. Uh, Mama Don't You Cry, 40 piece and a piano and vocals, of course. And um, Everybody Loves Eileen, full band, kind of like a live slash studio vibe. Um, I'll Never Let You Go, acoustic guitar, vocals. Um, and uh, what else? Um, I'm missing something. I don't know. This is more. There's ten songs all together. Okay. Yeah. For, are they all from the first two albums? Uh it's it's from everything. It's for it's oh. just the songs, the most popular songs that are around the world. You mm. know, those are the ones that are on the album. 
And four okay. of them have been four actually, well, Trust and Love is on there too. That's new. Um, and there's another song called In Love. That's uh that's another new one. So there's basically like two new ones and four re-records. Okay. So yeah. Trust and Love is the new and that is under the Steelheart moniker, right? Because yeah. some of your stuff is under just your solo artist, right? Yeah, we're done with that. You're done. Okay. <laughs> okay. Not that we're done with it. Let, let me explain. It's like, you know, for years, you know, it's been like, uh, you know, when I came to this country, you got, I was Mike, Michael, M M Michael Matijevich. Okay. Because coming to this country, it's, you know, at that age, it's very, it's very, um, it was very different, you know, coming with a name Milenko or Mili is just like, uh -uh, especially going to school, you know? So um, it was Michael and it was Mike. You got Mikey Steele. You got this guy. And I go, you know, so it's like, very confusing for a while. So my father passed away. I changed my name back to the birthright name. Milenko. Hmm. That's who I am. That's where I was born. That's who I am. Mili is short for Milenko. It's like Mikey Michael, right? And my friends call me Mili. The world knows me as Milenko. And um, Steelheart has been with me my whole life, my whole career. And I've come to a realization. It's like, well, this is what it is. So everything I do is Steelheart. From now on, it's just Steelheart because that's mm -hmm. that's who I am. That's what I. I mean, I've built it. I've. I can't. Uh, what's the word? Uh, it's what it is. I accept yeah. it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's a world world known thing. Everybody knows Milenko, but they all really know Steelheart more. So it's like, why, why confuse it? So I want to stop the confusion. Okay. No, that makes sense. Yeah. Cause I just, I saw some of it's under your solo stuff. So uh, you own the Steelheart name it, and it's, we have new members now, right? Because uh, there's no original, you're the only original. I mean, you are Steelheart though. You're the voice of right. Steelheart. Yeah. I'm okay. Steelheart. Yeah. I'm the writer, <laughs> produce, writer, producer. I make coffee. What else, what else is there? You know, yeah. and I pay for it all. So it's like, yeah. uh, you know, if anybody wants in, just come on in and give me a, you know, give me a check and we'll talk. You know? Right. Yeah. So oh. I saw the video for the trust, trust and love. I think that's, that's the new one, right? Yeah. It's, yeah. it's really yeah. elaborate. It's got, it's got a guitar solo. It's got the piano and then it's got the cool, like aerial shots. It's really neat. Yeah. yeah. I, I, um, I, I got a new job at the seven 11 now after paying for that one. And, uh, <laughs> I can't, um, I mean, sometimes they, some musicians, Hey, have to, they have to do some crazy stuff to make ends meet. So, well, no, I'm only kidding. I'm kidding. I I, I I didn't know, so I figured. No, but I no, 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 no. Seven no. Eleven. I mean, come on. I could yeah. get a job somewhere else, mechanic. Well, you could at least just do singing lessons. That's what I always wonder when I hear these stories of musicians working on houses and things. I'm like, you could do guitar lessons, singing lessons, whatever your instrument is. I mean, that's like people would pay top dollar to have professional uh, lessons. Yeah, I, I may do a. Um, I was thinking about doing a uh, a video or a master class for uh, vocals. You know. I think um, it's, I think a lot of singers would really enjoy it. And it's not just about singing. It's all about the preparation as well. You know, mm -hmm. it's the mindset. It's the energy. It's your, your, uh, your physical side. It's, it is a lot involved, you know, and I know all the singers know what I'm talking about, but um, anyway, back to the video, the video, video was, um, I mean, it was really important because I wrote the song for the world. Originally I wrote it for the, the uh, unification of the peninsula for Korea, okay, for the north and south. I do a lot of work in Korea. Steelheart um, has been going there since 1989. And the song She's Gone is still the number one karaoke song today since 1989. So this the song is extremely famous. And um, anyway, I lived there for in 2017. A lot of TV shows, dramas, stuff like that, and um, and I don't know. I was watching the news one night, and it was just horrific. You know, you got the arguments, you got the war, and this, I'm gonna throw another bomb at you, and the human trafficking, and I was just like, oh man, I gotta do something. I gotta feel like I need to write something for the unification of people, put people together. You know, and um, I sat down by the piano, and you know, trust and love came out. It just started writing itself. You know, no fight, no effort, no, it was just like something coming through me. And um, 
my job was just to follow along and to, you know, capture that channel and, and just to deliver that song. And um, so when I finished it uh, in English, we translated into Korean and I sang it in Korean. And it just seemed like it was much bigger than just that, you know? So I thought, it's like, you know, I could probably just sing it in my language, Croatian, considering the war in my country. They could use a little unification too, you know? So when I finished it in Croatian, I was like, wow, shit, you know? Italian, Italy's only across the channel. Might as well sing it Italian. So I sang it in Italian. So if I sang it in Italian, I got to sing it in Spanish. So it's Spanish, and Portuguese, uh, Russian, uh, Japanese, Chinese, Hindi. Uh, I did 10. So I did 10. Wow. And I got I got the three more that are in the works. I got the Swedish, Germans, French. And but I also want to do I want to do Arabic. So so I still got the, those to do. And um, um, it is we're releasing now the Spanish and the Portuguese. OK. Out. Yeah, that's coming out next. How are you so, learning all these languages? Um, so what I did is I connected with people or artists around the world through my publisher and also through friends and um, like some big bands, like, uh, like in uh, Mexico, I connected with, with uh, my friend who manages the band uh, Agora and this is me and a singer got together. We, you know, put it together and translated the lyrics and then I would sing it. And, um, and then I would just uh, get on zoom with them and do the enunciation and it would take it's a process you know like the chinese i mean it's, it's a process man you know i mean it's chinese you know and um lane was great so we said no sing it like this it's and we would just do it on zoom and whatsapp until i got it close and then when i understood as soon as i comprehend the the enunciation because it's very difficult for people to explain a language, especially the, the nuances, you know, they'll, mm -hmm. like the Koreans would say to me, say sa, I go sa, no, no, not sa, sa, I'm like, okay, sa, no, not sa, sa, I go sa, yeah, that's it, I'm like, fuck, I've been <laughs> saying that 40 times, what are you talking about, you know what I mean, yeah. I'm like, so, okay, so how do I, so it takes a minute to figure out the, lit, the slightest little thing that makes like you know the English language, hmm. you know when you you got the you know you got the Russians or the Croatian they talk like this you know they can't do the can'ts and the eyes and you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So, so it takes so which, a minute. Yeah, which country is it uh, t most popular in right now? Uh, probably Korea. Korea. Uh, okay. It's been on Korea. Uh, the English version is growing. We are still building. We're just we're like only a month and a half into it of promotion. Hmm. So it's, um, it's going to take a minute, you know, unless it just, you know, clicks, but now we got, we got a war. We got, we got such chaos in the world that a song like this is almost like, they don't even want to hear that right now. It's almost like it's going to have to come back later on and go, okay, you know what? We need a song like this. So oh, yeah. We'll see well, how it I goes. Mean even in America, there's division and it's just, it's all over the place. So, Oh yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, um, we have definitely uh, reached challenging times. So, yeah. Well, that's, that's great. You're, you're doing a, a good thing for the world trying to make uh, music that yeah. brings us together and not, uh, I mean, I like the fun party music too, though. So, you know, but it's like, I, I like how I'm sure you get tired of just doing party songs. You want to do more deep, meaningful kind of stuff. So, well, I mean, it just, it drove me. It's not like, you know, I, I don't make music to just make music. I make music what comes through me. You know what I mean? And and that that was really important. And it was a it was two years in the making. I um, when when I started it, it was like the pandemic hit hard, you know, and I had the choir set up. I had all these things to record. It would have been easy. But then a pandemic and I was like, shit, how am I going to do this? You know, so um, what I did is is I put the chorus, I sang the chorus and the lyrics on my website. And I asked all my fans to send in their vocals, sing to the, sing to the chorus. And I don't care if it's on a phone. I don't care if it's professional. I don't care how you send it, just send it. And I'll figure it out. I'll get it in there. And um, 
Some people sent in some amazing stuff. Some people sent in the phone, some in just uh, also uh, a video. And um, I got all close to 350 people and they're all in that course. And it created a gorgeous chorus. They were, you know, mm-hmm. and the orchestra we did in uh, Paramount and also in Skopje, which is yeah. in Macedonia. Right. So and via Zoom, 40 piece orchestra, you know. So, so how will you perform that live? If, if uh, I mean, you're not going to bring the 40 piece orchestra on the road, I wouldn't think. No, you got you got to use samples. I mean, okay. it's, you know, use the samples you, you play to. Uh, we did it in. Um, we did a, a benefit for Ukraine at the whiskey not long ago. And that was the first time we performed it. We, we had a backing track, but we had the uh, live drums, live guitar, live bass. Uh, the strings were, um, the strings were sampled and um, some of the um, keyboards that I created, you know, the atmosphere stuff and part of the chorus. And then we had other uh, chorus singers. So it works. I mean, you got you, it. I mean, you're not going to get a 40 piece orchestra up there. You know what I mean? No, unless uh, you're Guns N' Roses. And <laughs> I yeah, think they do. Maybe next week. We'll see. Yeah. 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 So are you guys, are you guys going to tour with Steelheart? Or are they, uh, is there shows lined up? Yeah, uh, Steelheart's always touring. He's always performing. We got shows coming up this uh, July. There's four shows in July. Uh, there's two shows, three shows in August, and uh, right now one of the shows we are finalizing for um, filming of the last scene of a movie. So oh. there's a feature movie uh, being made, and um, the song "Trust and Love" is the theme song of the movie. So, um, ironically, when the director heard the song, we're in a meeting and he's listening to some of my songs. And uh, sorry, I don't know if it's helicopter is loud. Oh. <laughs> uh, and uh, so anyway, we're listening to my songs and I played him Trust and Love last. When he heard Trust and Love, he goes, we got to have this. This has got to be in the movie. This is perfect. Not only that, we got to call the movie Trust and Love. This is perfect. Let's call the movie Trust and Love. So, so that's what's wow. happening. I'm, yeah. So August 20th, I'm just waiting right now to get a green light to shoot the last scene. Um, and it's a really cool movie. It's about a producer who is at, at his end, who's a famous producer and divorced and all kinds of shit happening in the movie. You know, I'm also acting in the movie and, um, and, uh, and then uh, the song is the theme, you know, the ending, everybody gets on stage and, you know, kind of sings and performs with part of the band and all that kind of thing. So it should be exciting. You'll you'll be one of the first to know when it's time. Okay, yeah, that's really cool. And then, are you also doing a TV series BSA? What is that? Uh, BSA. I don't know what that is. Uh, I thought I saw it on the, the on your uh, like IMDb. I could be wrong. I thought it was um, something like that. Well, I did. I did do. I did do several in Korea. Uh, oh. Dramas, dramas, and TV series, and also, um, yeah, actually, I got to update that IMDb and look behind on that. But um, I do have in the can. I have a whole, a whole thing that I did of uh, travel and cooking and crazy shit. We haven't released. There's so much footage. I, I cannot keep up. Okay, between the album you know talking to artwork and things and touring and recording and you know editing and it's it's endless endless created steelheart tv and there's 40 videos up there right now and we're about to launch that i wanted to have one concert cut and it's half cut now that we shot in korea uh, at the pentaport festival Thirty thousand people 16 camera sheet shoot i mean major shoot and I want to do, um, have that cut and then, you know, put the Steelheart TV up. It's everything. Oh. It's all, I mean, there's so many videos and backstage and interviews and travel. It's endless. Is this so, going to be like on YouTube then or? No, 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 no. This is my TV station, Steelheart TV. Like that, it. Steelheart. Uh, okay. It's a full on TV show, TV station. And, um, and, uh, yeah, I'm not ready for that, but I can literally put it up on Roku and, and Apple TV and all that, but I'm not ready for that. That's, 
we need, you know, you need something that's consistent, you know. But this is more for the fans. Uh, you can watch the videos. You can watch the concerts, pay per view. You know, I got to make some money somehow. You know, and I hope I hope it works. I really do. Yeah. No. Absolutely. So. Yeah. Well, it sounds like I mean the movie stuff that helps a lot too, right? Yeah. And getting songs and and music and things like that, and or uh, songs and TV and movies and things like that. No, absolutely. Uh, there's another movie in in the works as well, which is not greenlit yet, but it's also really cool. I'm really excited about that one as well. But you know, fingers crossed. You know, I'm. Can um, you tell us anything about that one? Um, I can tell you it's a pretty big movie and some real you know actors are going for, but uh, there's still things that are in the works of. Um, I think uh, locking down. You know what I mean. So okay. it's like, you know, you can't talk about stuff until it's locked down, right? you know, and um, I have to be respectful to them too. But it is, uh, the other movie is definitely happening. Okay. So that's, that's shooting in August and September and uh, we'll be out next year. So would the other so, one, um, the one that's not locked down yet, is that going to be using like an old Steelheart song or this be new Steelheart music? We're going to, we're going to use uh, We All Die Young. Oh. Uh, we're going to use We All Die Young. We're going to use... Um, uh, possibly I'll never let you go. What I just recorded the new version acoustic. Okay. And, uh, and the end either, um, my love is gone. A song called my love is gone uh, that I wrote or, um, or it will be trust and love again. I don't know. Okay. Whatever okay. they want, whatever yeah. they want, you can have, you know what I mean? Yeah. So. Well, yeah, we all die young. That's such a cool song. That was actually a steel art song from the, was it from the weight album, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And then they, they used it in the Rockstar movie. Uh, now, I heard some rumors that you were going to actually do some live shows with Steel Dragon with like Zach Wilde and Jeff Pilson and yeah. Jason Bonham. Yeah, well, not with Jason. What oh. happened in 2019, I put the, together a concert in Pompano Beach, Florida. And uh, I connected with this friend of mine who was a, a promoter out there. And we had a set. We had the date set. Everything was in place. Everybody was on board. It was me, Zach Wild, uh, Matt Sorum, and Jeff Pills. Mm. And um, it was it was ready to go. And then pandemic hit. Boom. Mm -hmm. gotcha. It just went. That, so we tried to move it to the summer. It got cut. Try to move it to the winter. It got cut. Try to move it next year. It got cut. So now it's like trying to resurrect it again. But, um, and I'm actually waiting on an offer. And uh, if it comes together, then uh, then I got to call the boys, see if they're available and if they want to do it. So okay. is that, you know what I mean? So it's just but, a uh, one off, though. It wouldn't be like a tour or anything. Well, I would love it. I think, you know, we, we just don't know where it's going to go. I don't know if people will be excited about that or it'll be like, ah, it's done. I'd be excited. <laughs> I'd see that. I think I think I think it would be exciting personally, you know. Yeah, and, that's uh, an all star well, band and they're great songs. And you said there's some songs that. Only uh, three or four are actually in the movie, but there's seven that you've already recorded, right? Yeah, yeah. There's other songs that you guys haven't heard that, that are every time, you know, Mark's singing in the movie, I'm singing. It's my vocals. And right. like, uh, but you don't, you'll hear just part of it, like Weird uh, Wasted Generation or the song Reckless. You know what? It comes into the back into the studio and it goes, uh, how does it go? Uh, there's a hunger button way down deep in my soul. I'm on a road. I'm on fire. You know that part? Insane yeah. is the name of my game. Just a runaway train like I'm doing outdoor. I forgot the words. But anyway, so like that song. It's a great song, man. No one's heard it. Huh. You know? So these yeah. are the, these are the songs. We would do all of those. So um, do all of those. And I would say we'd probably do some, you know, Zach, or maybe some, I don't know, maybe a Dawkins song, maybe a Guns N' Roses song, maybe a, a Black Sabbath song, you know, or an Ozzy song. You know what I mean? Anything. You know what I mean? Kind of create this the whole. This sounds amazing. I'm in. Yeah. Sign me up. That's what if I would like. It's only one show. I guess I got to fly to Florida or something. Well, I yeah, I think my my vision of it is let's let's book one show and see where it goes. I think it should be. I think it should be ten. Personally. At least, at you least, know. Phoenix all... should be on the 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 tour date. I think. I think it should be. Yeah. It's a great location. Come here in the winter. It's beautiful. Right. Yeah. I mean. Let's see what happens. Let's see what life has in store. You know, we I can only present, and the rest is to the universe and you know everybody else. You know, so yeah. we shall see. And 
Yeah, and in the meantime, though, when you do steal, when you tour a steel heart, you do some of those songs from the movie, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, we do. We definitely do. We all die young. We do blood pollution. We do living the life. Um, we're gonna probably put a stand up back in a set, you know, and um, we'll see. Uh, yeah, it's all exciting. It's just you know, enjoying life and making music and and uh, doing what we do, you know. Yeah, no, I I love it. Um, gosh, what other projects? Anything else? It yeah. seems like you're so busy. I don't uh, know if you have room it, for anything else, but it it's endless. I mean, yeah, there is other projects. Other pro I mean, I have something else that's cooking, and I I I don't even want to talk about it until I get closer. But it's, okay, it's it's something that I hope it will take off. You know, I got a new well, we got a new store that's going to be opening, Steelheart Store. Okay. Uh, the, the one that's up now is just so old and dated, but the new one is so sleek. It's, um, it's, uh, very, um, today. And I got, I'm getting into a bunch of different things. Um, cause I love clothes. We got, um, a steel heart jacket that we made. I don't know if you saw that my original replica, we replicated that one. That's like the bling. If you with want the studs really, on it? Yeah, 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 yeah. With the studs, you know, the whole thing. It looks amazing. It's done absolutely fantastic. How much and, is that? Uh, That's got to be expensive because that thing's like not, I mean, it's elaborate. It's a thousand bucks. And that's actually cheap. But I wanted to, I wanted to, I'm not making a lot of money on it, but I wanted to make sure that people are able to, you know, get it. I can't sell it less than that because it's just like, it's ridiculous, you know? Yeah, it's elaborate. It's like, yeah. Like, it's man, how do they even make that? Does somebody hand make it or is it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. It's, it's, it's all handmade, hand done, put together, you know, the studs in there, the, the jackets handmade. I mean, it's legit. And the leather is amazing. And we just finished it. I just got the first um, photos of the new prototype of a new jacket. I'm doing a, uh, like a moto jacket. So it's like a, you know, it's like a funky uh, triumph kind of vibe, just sleek and James Dean kind of thing, you know, with a, uh, with a steel heart. It says, I am free steel heart logo pressed through the back of it. Really cool. Oh, that sounds so really doing cool. That. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I, you know, I, I'm just, it's like, I'm just trying different things. I love all of that stuff. And not only that is, um, you know, it's, it's like music really doesn't sell music anymore. You know, music, everyone's stealing our music. It's kind of sad. I have to say it. It really is because um, what it what it takes to create music and what it costs to make music. And then people just feel like it's OK to just download it for free. And then, you know, and you got YouTube and you got Spotify, and Pandora. They're all making the cash and sadly, you know, the artists are going lower and lower and lower. And how do you keep up? How do you keep creating music? How do you sustain, you know? And, um, and that's one message I'd like to give to the fans. You know, I love you all, but I mean, to all the artists that you really love and has, that has helped you through your times of trouble or times of happiness or party, whatever you have, you know, when they do come out with something new, buy the record for 99 cents. It's 99 cents. You know what I mean? Just give it the respect, you know, and it does help. I promise you, you know, it does help. Otherwise, you know, where do you go? You got 70,000, 70,000 songs uploaded a day to Spotify. That's, that's ludicrous. Mm -hmm. You know, it's ludicrous. So Spotify you Ahead, you said that they're um, you guys are getting less money and not. It seems like they should be paying you guys more. Like, nah, nah, it's brutal. It's 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 terrible. I'm telling you straight up. Don't let anybody tell you different. Yeah, no, it's, I know that's what everyone it. says. Everyone says it's brutal, but I'm like, I, I was hoping that it would start to get better. Like maybe Spotify would. Just, I mean, even if Spotify charges people more to have you know no commercials or whatever. I feel like people would pay. I mean, it's like what, like ten bucks a month for Spotify or something. What if they charge fifteen? I mean, that would make a that could make a huge difference to artists. Yeah, I it and then you know, but it all goes different though. That's the other part. The other part is like if you're in a pool, you know, you're in a pool. So if Metallica is getting all the plays, all the guys that are 
you know, the guys that are getting a million plays a, a, a month are getting much, much less money where the other bands are hogging all of it. You know what I mean? You got Beyonce and, and, or Coldplay. So the, it's, it's very, it's not proportionately done correctly. That's where it gets to be confusing, you know? Yeah. So I, I again, I was strong to say, if you're listening to that, but if the song comes out, download the thing for 99 cents. And even then the artist doesn't get 99 cents because the distributor takes 30% right. or 40%. So, you know, Apple takes, what is it? 30% something like that. And then it, wh whoever your distributor is, whether it's uh, whether it's tune core or professional Sony or the orchard, they're taking another percentage. So by the time the artist gets paid, he gets like maybe 40 cents. Yeah. That's now people reality. need to buy That's reality. They need to buy merch, T-shirts, and also the T-shirts and stuff like that. That advertises your band as well. But I think the movies and yep. TV thing. What about meet and greets? Do you do you do that? And that's another we way do. a lot of bands have made money. Yeah, we do a lot of meet and greets. We really welcome everybody. We really take care of everyone really nicely. We give them um, shirts. We do. Um, there's different tiers of it, and sure. we do. Um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, we do photos. I mean, we do a, we do, we really take care of our fans. And um, not only that, we also take care to the first uh, uh, responders. They, they, the first five tickets are free. If you want to come to my show, just, uh, just uh, email, uh, I forgot what is the contact at steelheart.com and you say, hey, I'm a first responder. I'm coming with my wife or whatever it is. Here's my ID. I'm a fireman. I'm a policeman. I'm a doctor. We got you. We got you. Wow. That's yeah. very cool. Absolutely. You know, yeah. they've, they've put out serious amount of energy, time, and, you know, their love to help people in this world, especially during, during this pandemic, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, all the projects that you have going on right now, but uh, what about the other projects that you've done in the past? Because you've done some cool stuff, like you sang with The Doors, and you almost were a member of uh, both Velvet Revolver and STP. Is that is that correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's great. I mean, it, that it's um, The Doors was uh, that was uh, that was an amazing uh, journey. You know, we did two major tours, uh, one in the United States and one in uh, Europe. And uh, before Ray passed away, yeah. And um, I, I mean, I, I, I transcended the late Jim Morrison. You know, my connection with the, the spirit, the band was fantastic. Our performances were amazing. I've had um, unbelievable um, moments on stage, uh, whether I'm making it up in my head or something really speaking to me or somebody. You know, guiding me through it, but I definitely uh, experienced that several times, and um, it was. Uh, I wrote a couple of songs with a uh, few songs with Robbie, wow. you know, and um, that was a that was a that was a beautiful thing. That was special. what's your favorite Door songs? Because for me, it's Roadhouse Blues. I love that song so much. I love Roadhouse Blues. I every time when when I see Robbie, if I jump on stage, I'll do Roadhouse Blues. I love that song. That's yeah. a, you're absolutely right. He always wants to make. Uh, he always wants me to sing uh, "Light My Fire." That's Because uh, yeah. I'm the only one that actually could actually hit the last notes. You know the fire. Yeah. <laughs> right. So with a full voice, but um, um, yeah. I mean, strange, uh, strange days. I loved also performing. You know, and um, and I have a lot of uh, like backstage little videos that i haven't released and i'm gonna start putting that out there see you know for the fans i'm sure they would like to see some of this stuff it's not very not the best quality but it's something you know yeah I mean? no that's really cool was there any other th projects that almost happened like the stp and the velvet revolver like things you tried out for or things you turned down um there was a couple of things that did turn down which i don't we don't need to mention anything good I, I think the band was amazing it was just the timing wasn't right you know mm -hmm. what i mean a couple of things i wanted to do um as far as uh, uh the stp thing that was that was different um 
it was just uh, I don't think the band ever got the music. The managers did, and it was amazing. It was like hmm. I don't know. Let let uh, let uh, let uh, Jamie send it to you. <laughs> okay. So yeah, I, I didn't. That. I didn't send it. <laughs> yeah, because you recorded three songs. I did three songs. Bell mm-hmm. Revolver. We did like four, four or five, something like that. But it's funny. It's Scott is in you know in that whole energy space. It's kind of weird, yeah. you know. Yeah, because you guys uh, seem very different singing styles. Like I feel like it'd be taking out the Corvette and not like hitting a hundred with it. Like, cause I don't think STP has a lot of like high, like screaming. I mean, you would, or unless you would have added that. No, 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 no. I, wouldn't add, I, I, I added what I added just, uh, just a little bit, you know, a little uh, to it, you know, mm-hmm. but no, no, you wouldn't want to go screaming in there. God, no. Sound like an idiot. Doing that, you know what I mean? Doing yeah. those songs. No, it doesn't fit. Right. I sing to what's needed. You know what yeah. I mean? And especially uh, when you're, it's like when I, when I joined the doors, it's like, you know, you gotta, it's, it's about transcending the energy, not copying. I don't want to copy Jim, you know, my, my job was to connect with the spirit and transcend an energy through me, you know, another, and just the, the, the nuances and the little things be, that would trigger, trigger the listener to go, whoa, holy shit. I mean, I have so many people say that to me because you just, that, that freaked me out, you know, because you connected. And um, that's the same thing with STP or Velvet, any, any band that has been previously famous and you jumping in, you can't copy it. You got to just, and you just got to do your version of it, you know? Yeah. No, well, that's cool. Well, so, I look forward to all this stuff that the steel dragon thing, especially that, that would be, I'm really excited if that happens, even one show, I would, I might fly up wherever that they yeah. fly down. So very cool. Thanks. Well, I always end each episode with a charity. Um, is there, is there a charity that you're connected with or that's, I know that obviously you're doing the song to try to, is there money that people can donate somewhere? Yeah, we, what we, what we did is the, um, the recent one is to the uh, kitchen. What's it called? The World Kitchen. Okay. Yeah, we've been using. I really do like them. I mean, they really, they really put a lot of uh, time, energy, and love into what they're doing. So that is definitely one that I, um, I would say, yeah, donate. Uh, okay. You know, I mean, Ukraine could really use. Um, I'm just, I'm just lost for words when I talk about the war. I'm just lost. It's just the energy of intelligence is just awful there. It's just such a low vibration, you know, and yeah. uh, it's sad. So, yeah, no, well, that's great. Cause I, I think I had Chuck Wright on it. Was that the same? You said you w- did a benefit thing of the whiskey. Was yeah. that the same one? Yeah. Yeah. yeah the okay. Chuck and yeah. And Jesse and yeah, yeah. We all did that. Yeah. yeah we, we gave that's... away. I got, a, I made a bunch of uh, trust and love t-shirts. We, we get, we kind of sold also for the uh, Ukraine thing. Uh, I donated a, um, a steel heart jacket, one of the jackets we raffled off as well. So, wow. uh, yeah, so it was, it was a, it was a night. It was a beautiful night. It was a good, good energy. That's really cool. Well, so, yeah, I mean, that's, that's all we can do is, uh, if we can send some, you know, people can send a few bucks for that. It sends them meals. Yeah. Everybody needs food. So that's definitely one way we can help for sure. So again, even, you know, what anybody, what I'm saying, even, you know, even a dollar, you know, goes goes a long way because if everybody gave one yeah if everyone if all my listeners gave a dollar that's like 10 bucks or something so all right <laughs> you know, no, so. Come on. all but, right well thank you so much this has been fun yeah. i'll put all the links in the show notes and i uh, hope to see you on tour my pleasure nice all to right meet you. take nice care buddy you. See you later. okay well there you have it lots of great stuff from neely and steelheart Check out the website in the show notes for more information, tour dates, merch, and all that good stuff. I just checked the uh, jacket. It is there. It's like a thousand bucks, but it is cool. It's like totally studded. It's legit. So very cool. If you got the money, that'd be a cool thing to get. Uh, And he told you how to buy or how to support the the band by buying the merch and uh, buying the music. So uh, you can also go to shows, do the meet and greets, share their stuff on social media, all those great things that you'll do to support music if you're a fan. And if you want to support my little show here, uh, I don't sell anything currently. It's all free. So just listening and promoting the show on social media helps me a lot. Some of you do that consistently or even occasionally, and I'm eternally grateful. So check out some of the older episodes if you haven't already. 
Um, I have a whole playlist on YouTube of 80s rock musicians that I've had on the show. And if you want to go that extra mile, you can always write me a review on Apple Podcasts. I'd really appreciate that. Um, thank you so much for your support of my show and the guests. Uh, we all appreciate it. And have a great rest of your day. And remember to shoot for the moon. Shoot for the moon.